Hey guys, hi. This is Abhishek, Master Teacher of Physics at Vedantu, and welcome back to the amazing question series where we actually provide you with some crazy amount of questions from the previous year AIMS papers. I believe this particular series have helped you guys a lot, which I could see very clearly in the comments and the likes and the shares which you guys have provided for the previous videos in the same series. Thank you, thank you so much for that. So, my dear students, today again we have an amazing set of questions. Let's get it started. Question number one. A meter bridge is set up as shown. To determine an unknown resistance X using a standard 10 ohm resistor. The galvanometer shows null point when tapping key is at 52 cm mark. The end corrections are 1 cm and 2 cm respectively for the ends A and B. The determined value of X is how much? You're pretty smart to answer this, so let's get it started. Option A, 10.2 ohm. Option B, 10.6 ohms. Option C, 10.8 ohms. Or option D, 11.1 ohms. All the best. And yes, you got it right, I believe. It's option B, 10.6 ohms. Yes, so I believe to start this particular quiz series, this was a very interesting warm-up question. I hope you understood the solution of the question number one. Question number two. An early model for an atom considered it to have a positively charged point nucleus of charge ZE surrounded by a uniform density of negative charge up to a radius capital R. The atom as a whole is neutral, obviously. So the electric field at a distance small r from the nucleus is in brackets r less than capital R. The your options are option A Z e by 4 pi epsilon naught 1 by r square minus r upon r cube. Option B Z e upon 4 pi epsilon naught 1 by r cube minus r upon r square. Option C, z e by 4 epsilon naught r by r cube minus 1 by r square. Or option D, z e by 4 pi epsilon naught r upon r cube minus r upon r square. Now a lot of squares and a lot of cubes and a lot of us going on this question, but I hope you will get it right. the correct option for this is option A Z e by 4 epsilon naught 1 by R square minus R by R cube. I believe you must be looking forward for a solution for this and here it is. Have a very close look and I believe you definitely got it right. Good job. Moving on to question number three. This looks pretty simpler than the previous question. So let's get it started. A deflection magnetometer is adjusted in the usual way. When a magnet is introduced, the deflection observed is theta. And the period of oscillation of the needle in the magnetometer is T. When the magnet is removed, the period of oscillation is T naught. The relation between t and t naught is option A t square is equal to t naught square cos theta, option B t is equal to t naught cos theta, option C t is equal to t naught upon cos theta, option D t square is equal to t naught square upon cos theta. This looks like a fairly easy question. I hope you definitely got it. Congratulations on that. The correct answer is option A, T square is equal to T naught square cos theta. For all the amazing students out there who were not able to do this, do not worry, keep up hopes and you will be able to do the rest of the questions properly. Be confident. The answer to this is here. Moving on to question number four. A ball impinges directly on a similar ball at rest. The first ball is brought to rest by the impact. If half of the kinetic energy is lost by impact, the value of coefficient of restitution is how much? Option A, 1 by 2 root 2. B, 1 by root 3. Option C, 1 by root 2. Or option D, root 3 by 2. What do you think? And 
and the correct option is 1 upon root 2. Very well done. And for all those students who are working really hard, here is the solution. Have a really close look. Good job till now guys, you are doing amazingly well. Let's move on to question number 5. A transformer with efficiency 80% works at 4 kW and 100 volts. If the secondary voltage is 200 volts, then the primary and secondary currents are respectively how much? Well, it's all about the current now. Option A, 40 amperes and 16 amperes. Option B, 16 amperes and 40 amperes. Option C, 20 amperes and 90 amperes. Option D, 40 amperes and 20 amperes. What do you think? Did you get it right? Let's look into it. The correct answer is option A, 40 amperes and 16 amperes. Very well done guys. Super proud of you. Let's move on to the sixth question. A solid sphere of volume V and density rho floats at the interface of two immiscible liquids of densities rho1 and rho2, respectively. If rho1 less than rho and less than rho2, then the ratio of volume of the parts of the sphere in upper and lower liquid is. Okay, that's a very interesting question to understand itself. I hope you got it from my voice here. The options are option A, rho minus rho 1 upon rho 2 minus rho. Option B, rho 2 minus rho upon rho minus rho 1. Option C, rho minus rho 1 upon rho minus rho 2. Option D, rho plus rho 2 upon rho plus rho 1. I really hope you have got it. Be confident guys, even if you don't get it, you will eventually get it. Just be concentrated on the question. And yes, I hope you got it right. The correct option is option B, row 2 minus row upon row minus row 1. Very well done. Here is the solution. Moving on to a very, very amazingly easy question. The least distance of vision of a long-sighted person is 60 cm. By using a spectacle lens, this distance is reduced to 12 cm. Then, the power of the lens is Option A, plus 5 diameter diopters Option B, plus 20 by 3 diopters Option C, minus 10 by 3 diopters Or Option D, plus 2 diopters what do you guys think? Now, my dear students, this is a simple 10th standard question. I hope you're getting it right. The correct answer is option B, plus 20 by 3 diopters. Very well done. Super proud. Hey guys, you have done till now so damn well. Let's continue the energy. Question number 8. A and B are two points on a uniform ring of resistance capital R. Easy. The angle ACB is equal to theta. Okay. Where C is the center of the ring. Looks good. The equivalent resistance between A and B is how much? Option A, R theta into 2 pi minus theta upon 4 pi square. Option B, R into 1 minus theta by 2 pi. Option C, R theta by 2 pi. Option D, R into 2 pi minus theta upon 4 pi. Now, yes, the question looked pretty simple. I hope the answer was as well. The correct answer is option A, R theta 2 pi minus theta upon 4 pi square. And here is the solution. Good job. Another amazing and easy question, a lot of confusions between P and M's. Let's see. Two chambers containing M1G and M2G of a gas at pressure P1 and P2 respectively are put in communication with each other. I have no idea how the gases are communicating, but they are. Temperature remaining constant. The common pressure reached will be option A, P1 into P2 into M1 plus M2 divided by P2 M1 plus P1 M2. Option B, P1 P2 M1 upon P2 M1 plus P1 M2. Option C, 
M1 M2 into P1 plus P2 upon P2 M1 plus P1 M2 and option D M1 M2 P2 upon P2 M1 plus P1 M2. As I said, a lot of P's and a lot of M's. Hope you're not getting puzzled in that. The correct answer is option A, P1 into P2 into M1 plus M2 upon P2 M1 plus P1 into M2. If you're getting confused, still about P and M's, here is the solution. Have a really, really damn close look, you'll get it right. Good job. So guys, we are into the final question today. I hope you really enjoyed this quiz series as well. And you know, in that way, I'm also enjoying a lot. Thank you so much for it. So moving on to the question number 10. A particle is describing simple harmonic motion. If its velocities are v1 and v2, when the displacements from the mean positions are y1 and y2 respectively, then its time period is how much? Option A, 2 pi, upon, 2 pi root, y1 square plus y2 square upon v1 square plus v2 square option b 2 pi into root of v2 square minus v1 square upon y1 square minus y2 square option c 2 pi into root of v1 square minus v2 square upon y1 square minus y2 square and finally option d 2 pi into root of y1 square minus y2 square upon v2 square minus v1 square now i have no idea why every options are like this being confusing between p and m in the previous question and here y's and v's i really feel sorry for you guys but you know at the end it's always beautiful good job guys i hope you got the answer right for this the correct answer is option d 2 pi into root of v y1 square minus y2 square upon v2 square minus v1 square once again, thank you so much for each and every one of you guys for supporting us really hard for the entire series. I really hope this is working out really well. Please do let us know how many questions you got it right in the comments down below. We'll be really waiting and hoping to see everyone's comment for all those students. These videos are helping out. So this is again Abhishek signing off. We'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, enjoy your life.